I would oftentimes serve pork belly served inside steam buns of various kinds when I was operating a pop-up in Detroit. And while I did start off with a crispy pork belly with a quick pickled radish and some hoisin sauce, it quickly got to get a little weird. Ever since I was a kid, I was a pretty big fan of the movie Chocolat. It was this big dinner scene and there was like a fish there. I think it was a roasted fish that was served with a sauce of dark chocolate and I was obsessed with that. It inspired me to make this dish simply because I really wanted to add more chocolate to savory applications, much like they do in South America. And pork belly with a sweet application isn't a weird concept. Concept. In a lot of Chinese restaurants, you would actually just get a side of sugar to dip some roast pork belly in and eat it that way. At least when I was young, we did. Things fall in and out of fashion, so who knows if they do that anymore. This is your basic roasted pork belly recipe. Just pretty much marinate the meat, poke a lot of holes in the skin so that when the fat renders off, it has an opportunity to fry the skin. Usually I would do it with this tool with a super rich and juicy pork belly with moist and succulent meat as well as crispy fried skin. For the meat side of the pork belly, I kept the marinade pretty simple. Some light soy sauce, some Chinese cooking wine, as well as some five spice. You, you gotta have five spice with pork belly. Also some sugar, I use some urethritol, which is a low calorie sweetener. Works great with soy sauce. Not only does it take the edge off of all that saltiness, but it also allows an opportunity for the spices in there to really shine. I would marinate this overnight with it wide open so that the skin still has opportunity to dry a little bit in the fridge and the meat will just have that opportunity to absorb all of that flavor. Also to help dry it out even more, I'll add a layer of kosher salt to the top of the skin which I will take off later on. I've never tried to dry age pork belly in this way, but I imagine that it would be pretty good if I did. Something for a future video. But when you're using a pork belly for this purpose, you always want to make sure you get center cut pork belly. It's the one with the more even layers as well as less rounded shape. The side cut pork belly is great for bacon. Center cut pork belly is better for roasted pork belly. It's the next day and I've drained the marinade and now I'm pouring boiling water on the salt to wash it all off the pork belly. You're asking me, John, you just spent the whole night drying off the pig. Why are you pouring hot water? <laughs> Why are you pouring? hot water on the pork belly now. This actually helps dry it out a little bit. If you put scalding water onto the pork belly skin, it actually evaporates off and it helps dry the skin further, just so long as the water is hot enough to steam right off. It's called scalding the pork belly and it's one of the tricks that helps you get a crispy skin. Now, normally you're supposed to have some tin foil here, but since I didn't have any tin foil in my studio and I didn't want to go and get it, I just, I just roasted the pork belly without the tin foil. It's not going to be as good, but just know that it would be better if I had tin foil. Today's side quest I am very excited for. We are going to see if you can pickle is that right? No. If you can brine chicken thighs in duo jiao. Because I make so much of this uh, Chinese fermented chopped chilies, I always end up with an just an excess amount of it. And I don't really know what to do with it. Even though I try to eat it every day, I just don't know what to do with it. And I got this idea because at the restaurant that I worked at, we used to make pickle brine fried chicken, which is delicious. And who doesn't like brined fried chicken? I mean, like everyone should brine their chicken before they fry it. So I figure, why not try brining it in this salty, spicy chopped chilies mixture? The process to making duo jiao is very similar to that of kimchi. Basically, it's just salting the vegetables, washing off the salt, and then mixing it with garlic and ginger and a little bit of uh, Chinese liqueur, and then allowing that to ferment for like three weeks. When I buy store-bought kimchi that just isn't funky enough, I also have a jar of like really old duo jiao that I would add to it to just add that like aged funk to the kimchi that I buy from the, sh from the store. You know, aged funk would be a fantastic name for a dad band. Very enjoyable. I like this a whole lot. I will be doing a whole ass fried chicken recipe based off of duo jiao brine chicken. And also, more people should make kimchi brine chicken. That should definitely happen more. Now, this chocolate sauce is sweet, but it is used with semi-sweet chocolate as well as has a higher amount of salt so it just like 
puts it in the direction of savory. I cook the chocolate with just a little bit of cream as well as a good amount of five spice so that it just kind of melds better with all the porky flavors. And also five spice and chocolate is one of my favorite chocolate combinations. It's very subtle and it's very spicy, not like spice, sp not like hot spicy, but like, you know, very rich spicy. Um, it's just a good compliment to chocolate and I think people should use it more. Optional but not completely necessary is uh, cayenne pepper. That was my little nod to chocolat because, you know, um, the lady put spicy pepper in, in Judy Dench's hot chocolate. Judy Dench was great in that movie. They were all great in that movie. The Aleppo pepper gives the addition of a little bit of smokiness. I don't find Aleppo pepper to be spicy at all, but it is very flavorful and it's a great addition to any kind of like spice blend. So I had done the preliminary roast. Um, the skin had not been broiled yet because that oven is terrible for that kind of thing. And I wanted to try something a little different since I had the opportunity. I don't roast pork belly a lot, so I just wanted to try a couple things. With the meat having been cooked, I wanted to try a couple of different ways to cook the skin. My personal favorite way to make crispy roast pork belly is to actually cook the whole thing in a pizza oven that has always provided me with the best results, but not everybody has one. So this I saw on the internet I think it was America's Test Kitchen, where they simply just fried the damn thing upside down in some shallow oil. And this was great. I love this. It's so fun. It produced such well and evenly cooked puffed pork skin that it was just, it was great. If you don't have a pizza oven, which is still my favorite way to do it, give that a try. Now, trying this with the boiler method, broiler method, sorry, with, um, What's it called? An electric stove? Not that great. No, do not recommend. At least not with my electric stove. I had to fix it a little bit with the blowtorch. If your oven wasn't built in the 1970s, I would say you probably have a decent broiler, whether it be electric or gas. Um, for the rest of us, do that upside down fry method. That was, that was so easy. That was great. So first we start off tasting the pork belly. It was delicious. It was crispy. It was flavorful. It was lovely. Um, you know, as to be expected. I didn't make the steam buns from scratch. I just went to the store and I bought some frozen, <laughs> some, uh, some, <laughs> she's so funny, some frozen steam buns. Um, I think this is called guapao. Gua, uh, I think it's guapao. Yeah, this is called guapao. And that's just a name for these buns that like open up where you put like stuff inside, like a little fluffy taco. It's just so joyful. Uh, oh man, I remember how this tastes. This is very, this is very good. I will, <laughs> like there's no way that this is going to be bad. It's just a, it's just a really perfect balancing act, you know, the sweet and the savory, but also made a little more mild by the lightness of the bow. I'm just looking at my dog in the background there. <laughs> if, if, if chocolate covered bacon had a God to worship to, to look up to, to pray to, this is, this is what it would essentially be. So many different factors of sweetness here. You have the sweetness of the bun, the sweetness of the chocolate, as well as even some of the five spice in the pork belly itself, all working together to make some kind of like congruent flavor profile, as well as the salt from the soy sauce as, and the salt inside the chocolate itself, like melding together, melding together in that way. But what really like takes the cake for this is the bitterness of the chocolate. The bitterness of the chocolate makes it so that it's not too rich until you've eaten the whole thing. But at the same time, I can only put away like two or three of these before I'm full. <laughs> Definitely give this a try.